I know one of the areas that you have in, um, say, an elementary or pre-intermediate level is verbs, uh, uh, adjectives of, of, of fear, for example, like you're scared, you're frightened, you're worried, you're happy, you're sad. Well, very often we stay at that level. So we illustrate the vocabulary sad, happy, frightened, but we ignore the preposition that is dependent after that. So it's really just take a step back from the individual word. And no matter what you're teaching, um, you know, even at beginner level, uh, you know, like how are you is, is a nice chunk of language there. Um, scared of, worried about, frightened of, things like that. So it's even at the beginner level, look at, it, and it doesn't, like particularly dependent prepositions, I'm using this as an, as an example because students don't, they don't necessarily need to know what about or of in that situation means. They need to know the, the key idea of scared or happy or sad, but if you teach it as a chunk, scared of, worried about, then you're already kind of, um, you know, uh, laying, the, laying the seeds of the information to the students where they need to look beyond the individual word. And I think that that type of learner training is really, really key, even from an early level. You might not be teaching, you know, complex chunks of language, but to be honest, I mean, you know, proponents of the lexical approach, they feel that grammar is basically large chunks of language. So I think that it can be incorporated at all levels. Yeah, and just to kind of expand on that with regards to this, uh, this title, te Teaching Chunks of Language, um, each activity does, of course, give a suggestion as to what levels you could use it with. Um, for example, the first activity that I did, it says beginner to intermediate, and probably the you know the the composition that I wrote um, is particularly difficult for a beginner class. Oh yeah. You know, but of course sure. you can rewrite anything you want, um, and you can do that with most activities. And the second one, which was uh, the word partnerships that was recommended for intermediate to upper intermediate. So um, I think you can, you can take... <laughs> can I interrupt you for just yeah. a second, Tyson? We actually took pictures of ourselves just before we did the oh. webinar yeah. because we thought you guys might actually want to see what we look like <laughs> today. Because <laughs> these pictures that we have at the front, you know, they're not really... Hello. Nice. Um, there we are. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I was dressing to match my chair today. <laughs> yeah, you have no <laughs> legs at all, no abdomen. <laughs> Anyway, that's what we look like right now. <laughs> well, about 30 <laughs> minutes ago, actually. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. Okay, so let's move on. Um, just a comment from um, Leo. Uh, I believe the lexical approach is a fantastic way mm -hmm. to stretch advanced students' knowledge. Uh, Absolutely. For example, when writing new Lexis on the board, I tend not to write isolated words, but phrases or sentences. So other, the other day, when we were talking about accidents in class, and a student asked, how do you say when a car roll in the air? <laughs> I am reading verbatim, by the way. Um, rather than write flip over, I wrote mm -hmm. the car flipped over. Nice. So what they copied down was the sentence, not the word. Uh, exactly. Yeah, That's great. Great comment. Yeah, great comment. Um, then Linda has a question. How can these ideas be used for a translation course? Translation course? That That's is interesting. An excellent question. One that um, I would not I, have you know, off the, to, I haven't really considered this before, to be honest. Um, I haven't taught in that context where my main focus has been translation. But I do think that the looking at the concepts of why we chunk language in the way that we do, I think could be very interesting from a translation point of view. For example, with Tyson um, looking at the logic behind connections, that could be compared to the, the, the logic behind the connections of the translation that you're working on, the other language that you're looking at. You could do a comparison along those lines. Um, I think that, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not 100% sure with that, really. Tyson, do you have anything to add to that? No, not really. <laughs> I, I, again, I, mean, I, do, I mean, the thing is with translation, you don't translate in single words anyway, do you? Yeah. I mean, it might be also interesting, you know, depending on what other language you're translating from, to adapt or to look at that language from a lexical approach as well. For sure. You know, and, and see what it is that the words that are chunked together in that language and how they translate into English um, whether the chunks transfer from one language to another. Um, yeah. That might be an interesting approach. So aside from that, sorry. <laughs> 
Uh, Heather asks, are there exercises, uh, games for low-level learners in this book? Um, I do think that we've kind of touched on that. Um, the activities that are in the book aren't um, specifically games, but uh, they do recommend um, a level that it should be used for. Um, did you draw a mustache on your face? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Yes. Listen, that wasn't me. For those of you thinking that's me, <laughs> I, I would have, but I actually don't have the drawing tool at the moment. Tyson's taken it away from me. So anyway, like I said, um, back to Heather's question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <I'm curious> here. <laughs> um, I <coughs> there are, there are not games necessarily. There are photocopyable parts um, of the text, uh, which is another key point we probably should mention, and. Uh, there are worksheets. There's lots of sample things um, to extract from for each of the different exercises, and even the ones in the first, um, or sorry, the second section, which is um, not giving you a specific chunk of language. It often does refer to the end of the text, where there are samples of things that you could use um, for chunks of language. Um, but no, that doesn't really answer your question. <laughs> no, there are not specific um, games, but a lot of stuff that can be used in a lower level. But, I mean, games, activities, right? Well, like the, the format of the activity can be adapted to any level, well, any, right? Yes, exactly that. Yeah. yeah. So it basically, I think, when you're looking at beginners, is that you choose the lexical items that are going to go in that format, but the creative idea of how to exploit that vocabulary is in the book. Does that make sense? Mm. OK. Um, then we have Bye, I enjoy the time very much from Al. Oh, thanks, Al. Uh, Heather says, happy face. <laughs> nice to see you from Siri. Berlitz travel guides are full of chunks from cool. Leo. Hmm, interesting. interesting. Uh, you can use translation to show students that chunks of language do exist in their L1. Oh, nice. Definitely. Uh, Siri thinks I need a hat. <laughs> Thank you very much, Siri. <laughs> a big hat to cover your face. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Anna says, of course, um, great webinar. Thanks very much, Tanya and Tyson. Hi, Anna. It's really nice to see you. Oh, and a shout out to Paul if you're still there. Thank you for the card. There. I've drawn it, Siri. Because <laughs> she told me to. And I do what women tell me. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I really think uh, that is about it. Thank you okay. very much, everybody, for yep. attending. I really, really enjoyed it. I hope yep. it was a great time, not boring and full of good information for you. Yeah. Oh, and also, please do the feedback. We, you'll get a, uh, they're going to get a, an email with feedback, right, Tyson? Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll get an email asking you for feedback. We'd greatly appreciate it. Um, obviously, we're, we're, doing our best but we can always do better I'm sure so uh, any suggestions or advice or anything that you have we'd be more than happy uh, to hear about <laughs> Tyson makes me very glamorous <laughs> okay all right so good night everybody good night bye, bye.